It's a job for all of us. That's the way to honor Trayvon Martin. I'm joined by Amy Holmes, anchor of Real News for The Blaze, and Angela Rye, political strategist with Impact Strategies. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. You know, the president took a lot of heat when he reacted to Trayvon Martin's death when it happened. Let me play that. My main message is, is uh, to the parents of uh, Trayvon Martin. Um, you know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. And, um, you know, I think they are right to expect that all of us as Americans uh, are going to take this with the seriousness it, it deserves. Amy, the president did not take a position on the verdict, but what did you make of his statement? Uh, the most recent statement or the, the most one that recent we just statement? Heard? I appreciated that he asked for calm, and I think that the residents, the citizens of Sanford, should be commended for their peaceful reaction to the verdict. And really, all across the country, there have been some instances of violence, but people are really pouring out into the streets, as you were saying earlier in your show, to connect with one another and uh, try to find, I think, some comfort as, as a community. If you saw these crowds out on the street, they were mixed race uh, of all ages and people speaking out in solidarity with. Trayvon Martin, but I would add that at the time that the president said that Trayvon Martin could have looked like someone who could have been his own son, I thought it was understandable to personalize this, so many of us have, but I thought it was unfortunate because it interjected uh, the president in a case that was still unfolding. We were still trying to learn the facts, and George Zimmerman, while I think that he committed a crime, I also believe that he deserved a fair trial, and I think he got one, even though I don't like the outcome. The New York Times praised uh, the president for mentioning guns in his statement and New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg also used the verdict to weigh in on gun laws. He said in a statement, shoot first laws like those in Florida can inspire dangerous vigilantism and protect those who act recklessly with guns. Such laws drafted by gun lobby extremists in Washington encourage deadly confrontations by enabling people to shoot first and argue justifiable homicide later. Angela, is it appropriate for Michael Bloomberg to be talking about gun control on the heels of this verdict? I think that's exactly the time that you talk about gun safety laws and the challenges that our country has with gun safety. Um, I understand that people think it's a political ploy. There have been a lot of articles written about, you know, the conservatives being on one side of the equation and liberals being on the other side. However, I don't know when you talk about gun safety if it can't be when someone loses their life or when someone is reckless with the weapon. I don't believe that George Zimmerman had... Um, a fair trial or that it was a good outcome. I think that at the end of the day, there were no winners here. Um, his life will certainly never be the same, but Trayvon Martin will not, does not have a life at this point. And Amy, there are people who are already criticizing the politicians, saying this is not something to be politicized, but when you have something that has sparked such a nerve and has raised so many questions about so many aspects of our life, isn't that when we want politicians to get involved? Isn't that when we want them to say, if we have a problem, here's how we need to talk about fixing it. Right, and I think that, of course, we do want leadership from our politicians, but what is the definition of that leadership and how are they moving us forward? Uh, Michael uh, Bloomberg, Mayor Bloomberg, is not correct when he is pointing to stand your ground law in Florida because, as the defense team argued, they didn't use that. They used the simple self-defense argument. And Joe Scarborough's column in Politico, I read it. He's obviously a former Florida congressman. He said he knows his law his state's laws very well and that uh, the prosecution had a very high bar to get over and they didn't. Uh, in terms of what we can learn from this, I hope at least one thing we learn from this is that you can't racially profile a young man walking through your neighborhood. George Zimmerman was told to stay in his car. He did not. He got out of his car and started pursuing this young man. If we're going to start to learn at least something about this, that it's the, the conduct and the choices that you make that could be leading you down, I think, a very dangerous and obviously in this case, fatal path. Steve King, the uh, Republican uh, from Iowa, had this to say about the president in regards to the George Zimmer, uh, to the Zimmerman case. Let, let me play that. The evidence didn't support prosecution, and the Justice Department engaged in this, the president engaged in this, and turned it into a political issue that should have been handled exclusively with, with the law and order. Angela, what's your reaction to that? 
My reaction to that is that he's fundamentally inaccurate. Um, this case, from the very beginning, it took more than 40 days to even charge George Zimmerman. From day one, Trayvon Martin was treated not only as a suspect by George Zimmerman, but also by the police department. That's why he, his dead corpse was subject to toxicology testing. George Zimmerman never was. So whether or not he agrees with the president and the Department of Justice weighing in, it was clear that Sanford, Florida, could not handle it by themselves. That is typical of their race, race, highly charged racial past, and it's typical of what happened in 2013 with the outcome of this case. Angela Rye, Amy Holmes, good to have both of you on the program. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. To politics now as we await word from Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, who is speaking in Washington right now. The senator, of course, poised to possibly change the rules in the Senate so that Republicans can no longer filibuster White House nominees. Today, a judge is hearing arguments and will decide if Pennsylvania's voter ID law is constitutional. The law requires voters to show a particular state-issued ID, but civil rights advocates call it a ploy to steal votes away from seniors and minority voters. As the debate over immigration reform moves along, like a slow lumbering freight train, it seems at least the White House and former President George H.W. Bush are on the same track. In a rare bipartisan tweet, the White House wrote, Hey, Bush Center, liked your video on immigration reform and the economy. Here's ours. The reply, thanks, White House. Right back at you. Good to have people talking about the important connection between growth and immigration. Meantime, the other former President Bush and his wife Barbara will be back at the White House today. The pair are invited to lunch in a ceremony where they'll recognize the 5,000th Daily Point of Light Award. The program launched decades ago by George H.W. Bush honors volunteer service. The Hoover Dam's power plant uses smart grid technology to conserve energy when it can and make more 